Okay, so um, I don't have a whole lot of time to do this presentation, but um, I just wanted to do a little quick demo of the art project for this month. The uh, primary project for the month is teaching the waltzing, uh, but the, the art project, the secondary uh, project, is an art project that um, you can go ahead and, and paint in an impressionistic way using sponges. So we have these uh, cello, they're the cellophane sponges um, that get hard when they're dry, all the way dry. And so what we're doing is essentially painting a landscape or I mean, the, the kids can paint something else, but it's um, a lot easier to do kind of a directed landscape painting using these sponges. And then um, we have Q-tips so the kids can do some kind of more detailed work with the Q-tips. Uh, I did a few different takes with the tempura that we had at Park Bond and then some, of, some that we had at Niles. And it was so watery that it was very difficult to, uh, to <clears throat> paint with them. It was hard to make any sort of definition. So I went ahead and got some acrylic paints. So we've, uh, we purchased, <clears throat> we have white, black, a yellow, blue, green, and red. So these are just the blue, green, and red. Um, we don't have, we didn't, ha it didn't come with brown. Um, so I have ordered brown and it, it's supposed to come on Friday. Um, if you do this project before Friday the 12th of October, um, if you do it before that Friday, then um, <clears throat> I'll have some brown, I believe I have some pretty decent brown tempera paint until we get the acrylic in. So uh, that should be fine. The thing with this acrylic paint is that it is a lot more concentrated than te tempera paint, so you don't actually have to use very much paint. Um, each of the kids really won't need <clears throat> a lot to do this painting. So um, just so you have an idea, I also did a couple other things. Um, I have mats here. <clears throat> I bought a bunch of mats at the dollar store. Um, and so each kid will get a mat and they'll go ahead and affix their um, the cardstock to it. Sorry, I don't have a separate um, uh to hold my camera so I'm holding it with the other hand it's a little bit more difficult to do this so what we'll do is we'll um, tape these so we'll um, make a few different sorry well just we only have to tape it in a couple little spots and as long as you have a couple of uh, rolls of tape um, or little spots of tape on the back you should be able to just put this, attach it to, here. so you'll attach it here this way, and then, and they can write their names on the back, and then you can go ahead and start. So um, the best way to do this is to, <clears throat> they'll have these, and then I've also cut some um, pallets for the kids, so that, because we were kind of blowing through the paper plates really quickly, so um, I cut the, the mats into four, and each kid will then get a pellet. And if you want, it actually isn't a bad idea to um, have uh, kids share one pellet so that you don't use quite as much paint, so there isn't quite as much waste of the paint. So the amounts that you're going to give the kids are going to be pretty small. Um, this is a pellet I <clears throat> already used to do a painting earlier. In fact, the painting that I did a few minutes ago was this one here. So um, the, the uh, let's see, let's make sure I have everything. So the mounts I used, um, this is a little trickier because we don't have a bunch of different colors of paint. The, because the paint's so concentrated, I've had to mix with the white and the yellow to get to make it lighter. So <clears throat> this is way more blue than you need. You only need a little tiny bit because the blue is very concentrated and the blue is primarily just for the, the sky. So the amount that you would use, I'll show you here, the amount you would use is probably about 
let's see, for each kid, you're probably not going to need more than about that much blue. I'd say, yeah, really not more, not more than that. Um, and then the amount of red is hardly any, um, because the only thing I used the red for was to add some flowers. And then if you want to add, um, some like apples to the trees. So if you look at here, <clears throat> I, there's a little bit of red through the grass. Um, the kids can add that in, but there's hardly any, so you don't really need to do much red either. Um, it's bare, you know, barely a squirt of that paint, um, but you can kind of gauge it. Um, if you're doing two kids per palette, then you can give them a little more. You also won't use very much yellow. Um, I used, I mean, the yellow was primarily just to lighten up the grass. Um, I mean, that's, that's really what I did. I used it to mix in with the green to make it lighter. Um, so yeah, there, there wasn't a whole lot of yellow either. Um, the one that you're going to actually probably use the most of is the white. And so I've, um, because I had extra, when I put the pumps in the, uh, into these half gallon containers, I had to take some of it out. So let me see if I can do this without making it. Sorry, this is the worst um, video I've done. Hmm. Let me see here. Just one moment. Um, okay. Yeah, so th this is the white. I just got some extra white. You'll probably use about... Um, I actually, I mean, that's, it's the most that I use. So you'll probably use about that much white in this. Um, and then you might have to give them a little bit more, um, depending on, um, yeah, just coverage because they are doing a full page. Um, and then the green, oh, I, I mean, I did use a fair amount of green. So the green, I used probably the most of white and green. Um, so let me see, probably, I'd probably say, oh, this is the worst video. Sorry guys. So probably about that, that much green. So if you look over here, I, I used a little bit of brown, not a ton of brown, but I did use that to darken the, um, the green and then to put the trees in. So this was. And so the brown I just used from my squeeze bottle, but I think I pro you probably don't need more than maybe that much. So that's that's the most that the, the palette that the kids will have on their palette. If you have to add a little bit more white, um, then yeah. And, and you might need a little less green than what I put there. So that should work. Um, so then the next thing once you've given the kids their paints, the next thing you'll do is you'll have them use a pencil to draw a little bit of a shape um, to the to, to put in like the, oh, the horizon line. And so if you look at this here, I just put um, a little bit, just for a little bit of visual interest, I put a little bit of a hill and then one behind it. So, um, and you just wanna make sure that you've got something blocked in. So. I, let's see, I did something like, like a hill like that, and then maybe another hill like behind it. Um, now, when you're doing a hill, the one that's going to be behind it, to make it look like it, it is behind, it's going to be lighter. You'll see in this picture if you, you know, it'll be a lighter green. So that's where the light the yellow and the white come in to mix with the green. Um, all right, so I've also included these uh, clothespins so that when the kids are using these sponges, we'll get them a little tiny bit wet just so that they're soft because when they're all the way dry, they're hard as a rock. Um, so we'll actually have the kids put the, the they can put the, um, the clothespins on them like this 
And then when they go into, they can tap it without getting really messy, especially because this is really concentrated paint. So the way I um, mixed it, and so this is up to you. Um, this is a little bit more complicated than um, just real simple, but I, I will be doing this with my first graders. I'm not sure if I'll do it with kindergarten, but I will do it for, with the first graders. So you'll take some uh, white, get that on your palette here, and then just a touch of the blue to mix it in. So I'm not, I don't want it to be a real dark sky, but I also want it to be dark enough that, oh, here, let's get a little bit more white. Um, I want it to be dark enough that when, oh, sorry, when I put my clouds in that you can, there's some contrast with the clouds. So if I can just mix this up, you can see that um, it's pretty easy to mix this up, oops, to mix this up with the sponges. So I just get it the color, a little bit more. I get it the color I want it. Now you can decide if you want to mix this ahead of time for the kids. If you've got really young kids, if you don't think they're going to be able to mix the paint, then you can always uh, do the, the mixing ahead of time. And there. okay, so then you go ahead and just start dabbing it on, and that's what makes it makes it impressionism. Is that you're gonna go in, and you can start dabbing it the sky like this. So you want to leave some of the white behind. Sorry, this is just the worst video. Sorry guys. So you want to leave some of the white behind, and make it so that. And this is what will be fun for the kids. You can keep adding um, a little bit more blue here and there if you want. But you'll just keep going until you've filled in the sky. So if you want it to be a little darker in spots, you can add a little bit more blue to it. Let's see here. So that there is a little bit more blue. And then it's got a little bit more visual interest in this blue then you'll just tap it all out and I'm just gonna finish this up okay so um, I just filled it in now you can see that I used a good portion of my white I probably used two-thirds but maybe almost three-fourths of it and most of my blue to do that um, sky so then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna this is this sponge the blue sponge I've got enough for each kid to have I think I have enough for like four, maybe even five sponges if they really need it, but I found that I only really needed three. I used um, a green, a blue, and then I came back in with the white. So, um, so then I would take my next sponge and you can take the clothespin off if you want, but I think I have enough for each kid to have at least two clothespins as well, maybe three. So then you're gonna, you'll have your next sponge. And on this one, then I'll go in and use, so I might, I'm gonna need a little more white than that, but I'll go ahead and mix. Let's see. I'm gonna add some of this green and I'm gonna mix, sorry. I'm mixing in the green now. I'm, I'm in, the green's actually gonna be a little more it's going to have less white in it than this the blue did. The blue is more concentrated than the green. That's why I ended up using more green um, overall. <laughs> All you're seeing is my counter up. So I'm, I'm putting this. Now the lightest green I'm going to put back on this the hill back here. And so the very lightest green that you have, the one that you use the most white with, you'll actually use back here. And see, that's actually darker than I was thinking. So I'll get a little bit more white. Um, I'll go ahead and tap in the green here on the hillside. Um, and you can start with this lighter, you know, the, the light green. But then as it comes forward, it's going to get darker. Um, and then you can go back in with different colors of green, darker green. You can mix some brown or yellow in with the green to give it some texture. And so that you can go back in and make it look a little bit more like grass by having it be, you know, the different colors. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this off. 
and I just wanted to see, I did add some more white here. I gave myself a little bit more white. I added some white and a little bit of yellow to this to lighten up this green. And then so that when I go in and put this, this uh, green on this mountain, little kind of mountain in the back, the lighter it is, the more it's going to look like it's kind of disappearing into the background. It gives you some perspective just by the color here, the lightness here. So that, that'll that give you that, that. And then when you go in with some darker green, um, let's see here. So then you can just darken it up with the green here. Then when you come forward and have the, the darker green here, um, then it makes it look like this mountain here is in the foreground. So yeah, I'll finish this up. As you get closer to the front, to the bottom of this mountain, you can see that, and this was actually Janine's idea. She had put, um, so I added it into mine um, and hers that she was doing with her younger kids. She added a little bit of the darker and then it kind of looks, it's a very impressionistic, but it looks like there's some rocks and then some water that kind of comes through like a little stream. And so you can see it is definitely impressionistic. It's, it doesn't look super uh, precise or realistic, but in that way you can then take your sponge and then add a little bit. You can go in and add some brown and green to kind of make the, to darken up the green. If the more brown you put in here, um, you can darken the green in the foreground so that you've got some darker, I mean, it makes it look like it's closer to the front. So you can darken this up and as it dries, you can then go in and add the blue that makes it look like a little stream. So I'll go ahead and finish that up. Now, while this is drying, this isn't ideal. You can see that the one that Janine is, is a little bit, it's definitely a little bit better. But as long as the kids are following along, um, then what the next thing you can do is you can go ahead and put the the trees in. So I just use a little bit of the brown on my Q-tip. So you're gonna make it so that it's pretty, yeah, it's not too wet. Sorry, that looks terrible. And then you can just decide, I'm gonna go ahead and put my trees. I'm gonna just kind of, I mean, you can just kind of use the, the, uh, the Q-tip to outline the shape of a tree. And then you can decide, you can have them be different, you know, heights. Put some down like more into the foreground. Sorry, I'm just doing a really bad job here. This is gonna be back behind it, a little bit lighter. This guy's gonna be forward. And then you can kind of just, it doesn't have to be real precise. Um, and you can do another one. They don't have to be real close together, but um, maybe another one down here. So it's up to you. I'm kind of making a mess here, but we're just doing this with the kids anyway. And cause, because it's kind of um, dry now, the, the sky is a little bit more dry and the, the mountain here. Then you can go in and add your, the um, greenery just with your green sponge again. So here, I'll go ahead and do that. I'll show you how I'm doing that. I'll go in, I, I have the green that I've here that I'm just gonna add a little bit in and then you can kind of just, um, it doesn't have to be too, you just wanna be kind of light with it um, so that it it covers up the blue but doesn't totally cover up the, um, you don't, yeah, you, I mean, you probably wanna make sure that your tree trunk is a little bit um, dry so that you don't smear it all over the place. But here's some. And because this is kind of blending, this is gonna start blending in with my um, mountain top. <laughs> um, you can add a little bit of 
I mean, to differentiate it, you can um, uh, add some other different like color to the leaves. Let's see. So it kind of you can get a little bit of that, and then if you want to put a little bit of brown in there, make it a little bit more green. And this is kind of a mess. Sorry not doing the best job here um, but then to make it look or actually you can let that dry because you can go back in and add some more grass around it put some highlights in the grass with some yellow maybe some flowers with the red um, in the meantime you can um, because the sky is dry now and you're waiting for this bottom part here to dry to add in the water um, you can do a sponge with the white and this is how I would do the clouds. Um, so when you're doing the clouds, see, you'll get, and this is just pure white, so you find a little spot on your, your uh, here, so that you wanna make sure that it's not too blocked in, like that it's not just, your sponge isn't completely full of paint. But then you can go in and add the, Oopsie. Add the clouds. So it just depends on how you want the clouds to look. I think they look good, kind of a little bit um, spaced out. I actually, you can kind of look at the, the shape of clouds, but you want some of the blue to be peeking through. Um, and then, let's see, we'll do another one here. But you want your your sky to be dark enough that this the clouds do show up. Um, yeah, that looks fine. Um, I know it's not an exact science. Certainly, um, kind of. Sorry, I'm making such a mess. But then you can kind of. I mean, however you want your clouds to look, it's up to you. And the more you add some like the real fresh widen you, it can look a little bit, you know, blended in. So then you've got the clouds. And so, I mean, they're not perfect by any means, obviously, but um, really Janine should be doing this. So then this is kind of dried, but now you've got this um, white from the clouds. And that's when I pulled a little bit of the blue in to make the water so um i've got the blue that to to um to add in for my little stream so then and i want it to be a little bit more you want it to show up so you can kind of i just kind of um have it it's gonna look I mean, it's not going to be, it's just the impression of a stream. Um, and then you can put, if you want, you can go back through and put, I mean, we do have some black. If you want to make it look like there are um, some stones, some kind of gray um, stones that it's, the water is uh, kind of, you can add in some stones or you can put some brown in there um, to try to make it a little bit more I don't know uh, maybe a little more realistic looking I don't know the I, um, because the it's not real obvious um, I'm just gonna kind of throw a little bit in and then I thought what kind of looked cool, I know this is, I'm just making a big mess, but what I thought looked cool is having little, the red um, and, and yellow flowers kind of intermittent throughout. So then I kind of came in and, and put the little, it just looks like there's some little red flowers.